be focused on just one corner of the repertoire, it must do everything and be open to the interests of many different people. Inspiring Arts and Culture on BBC News. Hello, I'm Christian Fraser. You're watching The Context on BBC News. In Ukraine, it was an invasion by Russia, plain and simple, with no justification. We are seeing what's kind of being dubbed here as Ukraine fatigue. In fact, the US Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield uh, really kind of warned nations against this. Putin has uh, miscalculated because he thought that Ukraine will be weak, the Ukrainians will be weak, but also that the West will be weak, that we will be divided. On our panel tonight, the former NATO Deputy Secretary General Rose Gottemuller and also Christopher Steele, former head of the Russia desk at MI6. Before we get to the panel, let me bring you the latest BBC news. The US and EU have announced hundreds of new sanctions on Russia to mark the second anniversary of its invasion of Ukraine and the death of the dissident Alexei Navalny. Moscow has called the sanctions illegal. Talks are underway in Paris to try to secure a deal to halt fighting in Gaza and release the remaining hostages. Both Israel and Hamas have expressed muted hope that this latest push towards a ceasefire may make genuine progress. Police in Spain say they are no longer searching for any people still missing after Thursday's devastating fire at a block of flats in Valencia. Ten people are confirmed to have died. And Shamima Begum, who had her British citizenship revoked after travelling to Syria to join the Islamic State group, has lost the latest stage of her legal battle with the government. The Court of Appeal has ruled that the government acted lawfully in removing her citizenship. A very good evening. On this night, two years ago, President Putin put the world on notice. Within several hours of this address from the Kremlin, the first rockets were already falling in Ukraine. And so began Russia's biggest assault on Europe since World War II. The armoured columns crossed from the northeast towards Luhansk Oblast as the rockets fell in the west close to Lviv. Not since the Battle of Berlin in 1945 had Russia combined its forces with such menace. But the resistance was equally strong. Immediately, President Zelensky declared martial law. And over the coming months, the brave Ukrainians would not only blunt the Russian advance, but by the summer of 2023, were taking ground back. On the eve of this second anniversary, it is hard to quantify how many have died. But by some distance, it is the Russians that have suffered the biggest losses. At recent estimates, there were 315,000 dead and injured Russian soldiers. That's nearly 90% of the pre-war invasion force for an additional 11% gain in territory. Tonight, the Security Council is gathered in New York to discuss the war. You can see in your screens there the ambassador from Russia making his statement to the council. A little time ago, we heard from the British Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron. Putin believes he can take territories, redraw borders, exercise force to build his empire.